Warning, read before playing. Very small percentage of individuals may experience epileptic seizures. Okay. I agree. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're answering the age old question How much EverQuest can a total newbie learn in about an hour? I am that newbie, and as part of my journey to try all the games of the book, Thousand One Video Games, let's play before you die. I've been instructed to play this one, and I do as the book command. Um, I did watch a brief little intro video to EverQuest, so I have like a little bit of a sense of how to at least get going. Um, and I did have a couple of friends who were diehard into EverQuest in high school. They basically stayed up all night, skipped school, like playing EverQuest would talk about it all the time. So I have a sense of like what EverQuest is, but I've never actually played it. So today... We're going at it totally blind, and we're going to see how far can I get, how much can I learn, how much can we see uh, going in totally blind. Uh, so first things first, we do have to join a server, and I think the video I watched, the guy suggested this one, so we're just going to go with it blind and hope he wasn't screwing with us. I think the game is loading right now. Um, as it loads, we can talk a little bit about the history of EverQuest. So EverQuest is one of the... It was the first commercially successful MMORPG to ever employ 3D stuff. And so as you can see here, we're going to be creating a character right now in 3D. Oh my god! <laughs> she is coming out of her, her leather top there. Wow. Uh, the women of EverQuest are well endowed. That's crazy. Wow, even the dwarves are. Um, funny that it just like, oh, you could be a cat person? Interesting. You could be a frog person, wow. Well, the frog ladies aren't well endowed, it seems. They get the short end of the lily pad on that one. Let's be a dude. What is it? A dragon. Proud and majestic dragons are humans touched by dragon's blood. Oh, that's pretty badass, actually. Hell's an Iskar. Ah. Be a frog person, too. Ah, oh, these black skinned. To indicate his maleness. He can be a lion guy. This guy kind of reminds me of uh, like Altered Beasts. You know, like the character in uh, Altered Beasts. A troll. You got to pay the troll toll if you want to get in this boy's soul. Um, we're going to go ahead. Oh, the dwarves only have one eye if you're male. Huh. <laughs> and the dudes are just like, they've busted out of their shirts. They, they, You can't put a shirt on that. No shirt can contain pecs of this magnitude. Could be a gnome. This guy just looks old and like he's just he's he's not not gonna bother with it no more. How about we be an elf? Wait, a, wait, barbarians and humans are two different classes. I thought this was human, but I guess it's barbarian. Um, actually, so what are humans? Humans can be all these different things. Monks. What can elves be? I should actually pick my race based on my class, honestly. Uh, where did Elf go? Or was half Elf as Elf as we could get? Oh, it could be High Elf. Okay, Elves can be Magicians, Enchanters, Paladins, Berserker. Oh, no, Cleric. Actually, you know what? I'm going Barbarian. Um, because I want to be a Berserker. I feel like that sounds like a cool, a cool class. So, yes. Um, my Berserker is Agnostic. He's thought about it and he's not fully convinced by any of the ancient deities. Um, he's from Crescent Reach. Nice place, I, I believe. Um, I think you can customize his face and stuff, but maybe you can't. Maybe you have to pay for that. This game used to be subscription-based back in the year 2000 when it came out. So you'd pay like $10 a month or something like that. Um, but, uh, but it, well, you can randomize your name too. But uh, it moved to a free-to-play model after a few after a decade or so. Um, I honestly was shocked that this game is still functional. So when I saw that in the Thousand One Games Play Before You Die book, EverQuest was in here, I was like, oh yeah, I knew people that played that in high school. Surely it's gone by now. I don't know how I'm going to cover this game. Turns out it's one of the most longest running MMORPGs and it's still going. So uh, huzzah, we could play it. I would have thought World of Warcraft would have killed this thing a long time ago. So we're on tutorial level. And let's just enter the world, I guess. Oh, uh, we should name ourselves. 
Uh, so this company was called Daybreak. So my name's gonna be Jaybreak, the Breaker of Bones. Let's go ahead and enter the world. Entering the Mines of Glooming Deep. Missing some spells? Head to the Plane of Knowledge Library where you'll find spell and tome vendors of every class. So yeah, this was the first uh, 3D MMORPG that was viable. Um, I remember the friends who I knew in high school who were really into MMORPGs, what got them hooked was Ultima Online. They went nuts for Ultima Online. They just started playing it and then all of a sudden I didn't see them anymore. Then every day after school they were playing that together. Um, and then this came out and this became the rage. The rage for people to play, guys. Like it's, it's hard to, I think like, People who grew up seeing that World of Warcraft was like the most successful MMORPG of all time don't fully appreciate how big of a deal EverQuest was when it came out. Again, I never really played it. I only have a passing knowledge of it. And today we're really just going to see uh, what we can get done in about an hour. But nonetheless, I, uh, I know that historically in terms of you know MMORPGs and their popularity, like many, like all of the one, all the current ones, uh, almost owe their existence to EverQuest in some way, even World of Warcraft, because it sort of helped um, pioneer those early days of the genre. Um, and we're getting into a backstory here about Kobold and uh, the Deep Mines. Uh, I'm just going to assume, because I haven't been paying attention, there's monsters, we got to kill them. Kobolds are bad, uh, so we better get those guys. Um, but... Here's a, here's a fun fact before we really get started. Did you know that EverQuest is the first M MMORPG that was 3D, that was successful? And EverQuest itself took a lot of inspiration from MUDs, you know, multi-user dungeons. Um, and if you remember what MUDs are, they're basically like a text-based version of MMORPGs, and they existed back in like the 70s, right? Like, they, they're old, so in some ways, like Ultima Online and EverQuest, you look at them here and you're like, wow, like they were they were so advanced. But in other ways, it's sort of like they existed for like decades before they actually came out. They just weren't graphical. You know, they weren't 3D and stuff like this. Anyway, this guy is giving us some basic controls. W, A, S, and D to move. Use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out a first person view. Um, right to move forward. Space to jump. Use F9 to change your view. All right, sounds good, dude. All right, so what what's going on, my bro? We scroll out. All right, there we go. Third person mode. The Jaybreaker is here. Um, so we can talk to people, I think, with H. You say hail. Um, he does nothing. All right, click OK to begin the EverQuest tutorial. As you stagger to your feet, you realize that someone is talking to you. Check the main chat window below to see what he is saying. Arya says, relax for a moment. I just set your ribs back into place. After the beating you got from those kobolds, you're lucky to be alive. Jeez. You still look a little dazed, my friend. Why don't you take a moment to get your bearings? Hold the right mouse button and drag to move to look in that direction. Okay, with the right mouse button depressed, hold the left mouse button to move forward. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, w, A, S, and D also moves. Use the up and down arrows. Why would I want to do that? No, that's... W, A, S, and D is way better. Click OK to continue. Arias is an NPC, short for non-player character. The first step in interacting with an NPC is to target them. By left-clicking, notice that when uh, targeted, the name above his head will blink and his name will appear in the target window. Oh, there he is. We've got him in our sights, man. Let's just turn to face him in case we decide to backstab this guy. Um, let's see. Wait, why am I rotating? Oh, there we go. Huh. Click OK to continue. Uh, many NPCs will talk to you if you hail them. Press H. Um, so I did, and he says, Hello, my friend. My name's Arius, and it's lucky for you I'm in a good, uh, I'm good at binding wounds. You almost didn't make it. You can thank me later. For now, let's join forces and escape this dungeon uh to respond left click on the word escape okay you say i want to escape Arius says glad you're with me i've picked the most flimsy cell door lock with the chisel i stole from the mines that's one obstacle out of the way here's what we have left to do all right we have a little mission that i like to call jailbreak 
Arius pick the flimsy lock, uh, kill the glooming dale, the glooming deep jailer, take his key and give it to Arius. Remember, you can open the quest journal at any time by pressing Alt Q. The task begins in the minds of Gloomingdale. <laughs> what happens if we decline this? Do we just stay in jail until we, like, do we have a trial or something at some point? I'm obviously going to accept. No, I, I don't, I don't, just, I don't, I'm not the kind of person who will stay in jail and, and face his crimes. All right. Find the Gloomingdale jailer, kill the Gloomingdale jailer, take his key, give it to Arius. Now let's do this. Oh, we got an ad. Upgrade to all access. So yes, EverQuest used to be uh, a subscription-based model like World of Warcraft, um, but then it became free to play. And I think World of Warcraft is even free to play these days. Like, um, but okay, I'm just sort of figuring out the controls here. How do you strafe? I guess you have to like right-click to strafe. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, let's go. There's the uh, Gloomingdale. Glooming Deep Jailkeeper. We have him selected. Go into combat. Um, melee attack him. Bash. Kick him. Oh, he he went down like a sack of potatoes. Oh no, he's still alive. His corpse. All right. You must acquire the jailer's key. Find the key displayed in the advanced loot window. This will take place. Okay, so. Um, this window, I, from the tutorial I saw, you can do things where, like, um, in adva at higher levels, if there's loot that you don't want, you can click, like, never pick this up. We can choose to leave this this time, or take it. We're gonna take it, obviously. But, uh, it's cool that there's sort of these, like, little, uh, you know, features in EverQuest that save you from some of the monotony of, uh, you know, these MMORPGs, or, or all RPGs, honestly. Um, to give an item to never, another character, open it in your inventory. Okay, here's my inventory. I have a key. Um, left click on the recipient. Uh, then left click on this. Can I just like give it to him? I uh, give. Yeah, there we go. Ah, pretty intuitive system, I would say, actually. Uh, Iris will lead you deeper into the glooming deep mines where a slave rebellion is underway. The unnumbered slaves surely could use your help, um, and you have much more to learn. The EQ button will be invaluable in your journeys. Click OK, and Iris will lead you to the slave revolt. Let's go do a revolution, dudes. Entering the mines. So, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, we played World of Warcraft on the channel. And again, I, I never played World of Warcraft back in the day. But I kind of had to, like, learn what the, the basic setup and stuff for that was. And honestly, this seems very similar. Um, and again, just sort of showing how, like, EverQuest kind of, you know, even back in the year 2000 was paving the way, creating a lot of the, like, standard things that... Uh, would be the way that uh, these MMORPGs would work for decades to come. But, uh, all right. So, welcome to the revolt. I, I also find that these MMORPGs are, like, very unique. Like, a, like an, offline MMORP an offline RPG wouldn't, I don't think, have this many windows. Like, MMORPGs are kind of like juggling a bunch of windows, it seems. I don't know. I don't know of many other RPGs that are like this sort of like window heavy. But anyway, let's uh, armor missions. Oh, look, we can like, go and get spells and stuff. Cleric or Paladin spells. Melee tomes. You have a tome for me, dude? Let's talk to this guy. What up? Uh, Bab Babic Patty begins casting minor shielding. Wait, I want to go to chat. Uh, Clyde says, hello, Jaybreaker. I hope you have killed many kobolds today. Uh, he says, Blast, I think we're going to have to completely do the wiring on leg seven. That mean. Okay, can we buy stuff? Wizard, Bard, Necromancer, Beast Lord. What am I again? I'm a Berserker, I think. Oh, that guy just go teaches swimming. He's a, he's a swim instructor exclusively. We talked to this guy too. Hello. He sighs heavily as he peers in the murky water. I've dropped my sword in the water and I can't sw wait. <laughs> oh, he can't swim. Can I? 
Do I know how to swim? I do. Uh, when swimming, press page up or page down. It'll point your character up or down. You can then swim using the arrow keys. Page up and page down don't actually seem to do anything, though. I think the guy's sword is, like, right down there. Down. Page up, page down, nothing? Um, okay. Well, whatever. I'm sorry, dude. Oh, wait. I am going down now. Am I? I think I'm gonna drown here. Uh, let's... Let's swim out of the water. Okay, whatever. Um, alright, let's... Let's actually just go on some quests here. Uh, when underwater, air remaining, blah blah blah. Um, alright, basic training. Unlimited minds. So these are my current tasks. The basic training. Hail... Arius to learn about finding path, to learn about weapons. Okay, let's go. Arius is going to give us a bit of help if we can find the guy. Let's see if we can find find him. And uh, Oh, there he is. The revolt. He's the revolt leader. This is kind of interesting, but I did read that uh, when EverQuest first launched, actually, uh, they employed, uh, what was it, volunteer guides who would act as basic customer service and... Uh, you know, they would forward, like, issues that you encounter to the game masters for the region. They would assist with questing and stuff, apparently. And they would just sort of, like, live in the server. So they were sort of, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, they were sort of, like, NPCs that were actually run by humans, which is actually pretty cool. But I, th I guess everything nowadays has been automated. But anyway, let's talk to him. So he says, it's a big world out there. It helps to know when you, where you are going. You can find the command to locate other important rebellion characters. Open the menu, press control F and press find your hotbar button. And this is like learning an operating system here. Like all the commands you need to know. Control F. And then you can search for people. Uh, oh, look. Beginner missions. Corpse summon. Okay, well, I mean, that is kind of a good window to know about. We'll just store it over here. I'm going to keep all my windows open, <laughs> like an old lady who's too afraid, who doesn't know how to use windows, you know? Um, press the find button. Find Absor and hail him to learn about weapons. Oh, I see. So where the hell is Absor? All right, Absor. Um, oh, look, it gives you like a little path to follow to get to the guy. Wow. All right, dude. Absor, what up? Hail, Jaybreaker. The mystical path fades away. All right, man. Uh, he says, hello. Before the slave result, I was forging weapons and shovels. Now I'm making weapons so we can fight back. Mainly swords and spears. Mainly swords and spears. Simple stuff. If I give, If you give me your weapon, I can make it a better one. Give him your weapon. All right. Here's my weapon. So we are going to give that to this dude. Enjoy, dude. Um, so he takes my weapon, hands it back, and it works much better now. He upgraded my sword for me. Boom. What is this? Drop item here to auto-equip. Huh. All right, what's the next part of my mission? Absor has fixed your weapon, pick up the improved weapon inventory, and drop it into the rectangular icon. Oh, I see. They want me to go into there. Um, this will auto-equip the weapon back into your primary weapon slot. There we go. Um, open your quest window, pressing Alt-Q to check the next step. Okay, next we need to find Valara. So control F to find. We are looking for Valara. All right. A lot of this game is like knowing how to like navigate these like highly specific windows, really. I'm sure you get like, I'm sure it becomes like second nature eventually. Valara has offered you a piece of kobold armor to keep you safe. Get the armor by dropping it into the large rectangular icon. Okay, thank you. Boom. We did it. Note that some armor you obtain can only be equipped by placing it directly on its corresponding slot, dropping a, a breastplate onto the chest icon. 
When you do this, the armor becomes attuned to your character. You will no longer be able to trade it with other players. Oh, okay. Uh, let's talk to her about armor. Uh, so she talked to me about things. Okay. Um, there are many others. We have wounded. Now that you have sleeves equipped, notice your inventory that your armor class went up. The higher your armor class, the harder it will be for your enemies to hit you. Now, it's funny that it's using armor class. That's uh, that's an old Dungeons and Dragons uh, sort of rating system. Um, and if you're familiar with D&D, there was like to hit armor class zero, like Thacko. That was like the acronym for sort of uh, just giving you a sense of like how good your, your armor class was. But yeah, EverQuest totally, it's sort of like a mix of mud, like multi-user dungeons meets D&D really. Um, so if you play D&D before, you can probably automatically understand the appeal of something like this once you get into it and get past all this training stuff. Once you know how to navigate all these windows well. Um, all right, next we got to find Zendaya. Zenadia, whatever her name is, over here. Um, we're going to talk to her about maps. Maps! Uh, you may bring up your map window by pressing M. Oh, yeah, there we go. Hey, there's mushrooms over here and an escape tunnel. There's a jail that we came from. We're in the slave revolt camp. Um, you should see the Gloomingdale. Oh, the mushrooms. Okay, I want those. Um, use your map to find the mushroom. Pick one. Okay. So I'm just going to navigate through map. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I want to be going this way. And if I just go straight. Okay, we're at the mushrooms, basically. Somewhere around here. A breaker. Oh, we got a mushroom. Sweet. Auto equip it. I have equipped a mushroom into my pouch. All right, we found the mushrooms. Well, look at that guy. He's like a werewolf man. I like it. All right, I got you your mushroom. Make me a stew. You may bring your map window by pressing, uh, pressing the M key. You should see the Gloomingdale mushrooms labeled on your map. You should see your current position. Okay. Wait, didn't I do this? Do I have to actually give her the mushroom? Here you go. Give. Ah, there we go. All right. We've learned everything we can about maps from you. Now we must find the the ancient man known as Rytan. Well, teach me about spells. I was going to say, how many more of these do we have to do? Uh, okay. Let's talk to this dude. Just give me the basics, game. Like, come on, I want to go start slaying some kobolds here. Ryton is offering you a beneficial spell, a buff for short. All spells are currently affecting you. Appearing in the effects window is a songs window. Spells that appear in the songs window are usually short duration that will disappear when you die or leave a zone. To inspect the properties of a spell that is affecting you, hover your mouse with the spell icon and right-click it. Okay. Um, is that all I have to do? Uh, I'm not much of a fighter myself, but I can bestow the power of God's favor. Would you like to be blessed? Sure, go ahead. Bless me, dude. Um, so I am now blessed. There you go. It looks like you rely on your melee skills rather than spell succeed. I'm not much of a fighter myself, but gave me a tome. Cool. Uh, oh, I think I just read it. I've learned a new combat ability. Ooh. What did I learn? And f Sit. I learned the ancient art of sit. I learned melee attack, bash, taunt. What did I learn? Um, learned a combat ability, finding your inventory. Right click on the tome. Once you have learned the new ability, open your, your combat skills, alt C. Okay, combat abilities. I have none. Is that normal? Press the S button to complete, see a complete list. Throw stone! <laughs> the ancient art of sn throw stone, okay. Uh, so what, what can I do? So I throw this one. Make a hot key. Can I, like, just put it down here? Boom. There we go. Alright, whenever I want now, I can just throw a stone. Let's give it a try. Doesn't seem to work. 
doesn't do anything. Okay. Whatever, click OK to continue. Um, it's also possible to create a hotkeys by right-clicking on an empty slot. Okay. For a description of your combat abilities, you can left-click, S button, endurance, requires abilities, blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. I've uh, I, I've done some uh, some RPG in the past. I'm sure it'll be fine, old man. Let me find Prathun. Prathun. He's gonna talk to me about grouping up. He doesn't know this dog hunts alone, though. I'm a lone wolf. The J the J dog hunts solo. Prathun recommends forming groups with other adventurers to improve your mutual chances of survival. This is the best advice you'll ever receive in all your EverQuest adventures. Okay, well, I don't want to do that, so thanks, and I'll move on. Um, there are many different commands, say, tell, G, um, okay. And you can shout, and out of character commands is also zone wide. Um, oh, that's cool. So you can, so many of your chats are sort of like in character, but then there is a way to go out of character. That's kind of cool. Main chat, you can utilize, new windows, chat filters. We're not really going to be chatting. We're not going to be making any friends today, guys. I'm very antisocial, so a lot of this, like, socialization stuff we don't really need. Uh, blah, blah, join, auto-join. Okay, thanks. Thanks, but no thanks, my friend. Let's learn about hot bars, because those sound more valuable to me. From Basher Alga. Mm, he's right over here. All right, Basher Alga. Oh man, it's a giant troll. Okay, speak to Bashar to learn about managing your abilities. The most important part of battle is preparation. You're gonna get killed out there if you don't. That's the first thing I can show you. Okay, how do we do this? Hot bars. Accept. Tell me about this hot bar quest. Um, you have been assigned to the task of hot bars. Okay. What do I do? Uh, hot bars. Talk to Alga. Learn about managing your abilities. <laughs> what a quest. Hot bars are primary tools for EverQuest. Using your hot bars assigned to activate different types of abilities. Alternate advancement abilities. Okay. Uh, cycling. You switch between a particular page in your hotbar. Um, okay. You can add new hotbars. Okay. Drag and drop things. Right click. Drag and dropping. Ba 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 ba. Okay, good enough. All of the options for this reward include a worn totem. I will select this this reward you successfully granted a reward for hot bars sweet hail areas to let him know you've completed training man we're just we're gonna be completing quests all over the place quests are about in this game i've learned talking to people opening windows and assigning buttons what an exciting rpg um no obviously we eventually get to kill people he's given you a cobalt skull all right, equip. That went... Where did that go, actually? I'm wearing it on my head. <laughs> it's a helmet. All right. Uh, congratulations. Do now finish with basic training. Hail guard Raziz, if you've not done so already. All right. It's time to start uh, revolting. The first thing we do is open up our little Rolodex and figure out where the person who's running the revolt is Raziz uh, wait what's he called guard Ratiz um there he is beginner mission all right guard Ratiz you gonna show me how it's done bro I'm ready to kill kobolds man Greetings, Jaybreaker. We are glad you've found your way to our camp. We can use all the help we can get. Clear the vermin. The vermin infesting these tunnels threaten our scarce provisions. All right. At the beginning of every RPG, you begin in low-level pest control. It is always the way. 
Let's do this. Speak to Guard Raziz about clearing the mines. Um, okay, let's do this. Kill eight cave rats, four bats, and destroy four nests. All right, let's just go, man. I will kill a cave rat. I'll, I'll, I'll stomp a rat if it improves my, my life position. Yeah, there we go. But I wonder if there's anything else I could be doing here. Let's take the rat meat and the, the cave rat pelt to prove that we killed a rat. Let's carry on. Alright, a cave bat! Alright, do it! Do a bash. Alright. So this is EverQuest. Um, you know. I mean, obviously right now we, you know, only have like basic abilities. Um, but eventually you get all sorts of skills and spells and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. But I, just like World of Warcraft and all the other MMORPGs, you basically just sort of like click on the enemy you want to kill, click go, and then the combat is kind of automatic. Um, go, and we will attack. Attacking someone. Attack! Go for it, man. Melee attack that thing. There we go. Um, I think, you know, like, personally... Wait, why, why am I not attacking? A rat. There we go. Attack! Kill it. I think for me personally, like, I kind of gravitate more towards... Like, I don't mind RPG mechanics in games, and I certainly don't mind MMORPGs. Um, I've said this before on my channel, but, like, I played Destiny back in the day. But the thing I think I enjoyed about Destiny is that it was an RPG and you did have stats and, and equipment and stuff. But at the at its core, it was a first person shooter and all the equipment and stuff that you got affected how the shooting worked. But it's like you still had to do the shooting. One thing that like for I noticed when I played World of Warcraft and, and stuff like that is that a lot of these games, the um, the fighting mechanics are sort of like slightly devoid of, of interaction. I mean, I know it is the case that when you get spells and stuff, you can it, it's a little more tactical um, of you know fighting. You know, so I mean, I guess I could compare it to to Diablo, which I actually do like, where you you click on guys and he kind of does the swinging, but you have to decide like what kind of an attack to do and how to like manage crowds and stuff. So. It's not that I dislike those games or this style of fighting, but I will say, like, I think I gravitate, especially nowadays, more and more towards the action versions of these games where, like, you would actually have to swing the sword to attack guys. Um, but, you know, now that I say that, like, I did really enjoy the King's Way, so I don't know, maybe I'm full of it. And the King's Way is very much like an... I mean, this is kind of like an old-school style of... Uh, of uh rpg you know where you just you say your character attacks and it rolls the dice to see how much damage you do the only difference is like i'm actually walking around in a 3d environment i don't know it's weird it's like i i don't think of this criticism when i'm playing an old 2d game because i'm not in a 3d environment or even when i'm playing diablo or something so i almost wonder if like i the fact that this is in 3d is giving me like higher expectations like i'm like it's in 3d why can't i be the one actually swinging the sword you know but with a 2d game it's like i have no illusions like why would it let me swing the sword um i don't know but uh yeah i mean because this is in 3d and it's like an mmo i, I i'm just sort of thinking of like destiny or like the division or like other uh games that i've played recently that would sort of fall into the broad category. They're not technically MMOs, but you know what I mean. Um, but the reason I really liked those games is almost more to do with the combat mechanics and the RPG elements I were sort of a secondary consideration for me. But I feel like for games like this, it's almost like the RPG elements are the most attractive part. And then the... The actual combat is automated, but there again, there's a lot of tactics in terms of um, which um, which spell and which attack, and you know how you're going to go into a situation and all that. So, um, 
So yeah, I don't know. Maybe ignore what I'm saying. We don't want to judge this game too harshly at this, like, basic tutorial level. Um, all great RPGs begin by, uh, you just clearing out caves, typically. But let's see. We need to kill one more bat. We need to kill one more rat. And find a rat. There's a rat. These things just spawn endlessly, I guess. Oh, and let's take what we got from that rat. And, uh, we'll be killing actual kobolds in no time. Oh, yeah, give me this sweet stuff. All right. Oh, look, that cave rat is scurrying away because it knows. Oh, destroy four vermin nests. I didn't even see one. Do we have to go in, like, down through here? I did not realize there was a vermin nest to be slaughtered. This looks like a spider's web cave. Gloom spiderling. Do I want to tangle with those? Hey, look, there's a whole team here. There's a little party. They're doing RPGing stuff. Wait, did they just cast a spell? It looks like a bunch of people just standing around watching a couple spiders die. Like, they're, most of them weren't doing anything, but uh, I guess it's just part of, uh, part of how this game works. It's kind of funny. So this game, as I said, uh, was based... We're, we're going to be looking for some uh, vermin nests, but while I'm doing that, we'll uh, I'll continue chatting randomly. And what I was going to say is that this game was based off of MUDs, which we have seen, which themselves were basically like text-based MMOs uh, based on Dungeons and & Dragons. And it's kind of interesting, actually, that this game is still going. Again, I did not think that this game would still uh, exist or be playable, uh, right now, uh, but um, it it is. Is that a vermin nest? What is this? Uh, let's attack this. I think it might be a vermin nest. Uh, it was. Okay, so we just got to find a couple more of those. It just looks like a pile of poop. <laughs> but here it here it is. Um. Okay. Kill this cave rat, then kill his nest, man. Um, it's interesting, though, because, like, even the, the very first MUDs are, like, still around. Um, and so these things have, like, a long life. So the fact that EverQuest is still going, like, 20 years after it came out is, like, kind of telling. Like, I wonder if it's going to be here in 20 more years. You know, are people still going to play it? Is it basically going to be, like, a gen the next generation of MUDs where, like, it's kind of just going to be online for almost ever, or at least as long as we're around. Because uh, if so, that's pretty damn impressive. Um, and, uh, you know, I've long said this, but at the, at the end of the day, I think gameplay trumps graphics. And so we can look at these graphics and like, yes, this game clearly is an older game. It looks dated and stuff. But like, we play older games all the time and we love them. So um, if, if the core gameplay here was good in the year 2000, and it's still good in the year 2020. I don't imagine it's going to get bad in the next 20 years, you know. In the same way they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. People have been doing that since like the, the, the 60s. Or no, not 60s, 70s and 80s. But the game is still good. I mean, it's gone through revisions and things have changed a little. Um, but it's still a good game. Um, okay, that is not an active one. Can we do this one? Yep. All right. Slaughter this one. This will be our last one. We're getting making making sure we pick up all the bones and stuff of all the rats we kill. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe this game's got legs far beyond our lifetime. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I feel like definitely World of Warcraft is going to be around for a long time. Like that that was the RPG that really uh, exploded. I mean. It's interesting. Ultima Online surpassed expectations. Then EverQuest came along and surpassed expectations. And then World of Warcraft came along and blew expectations away. It's like MMOs just kept becoming more and more interesting to people. And I remember there was a point where like everything was going to be an MMO. The Matrix, Star Wars. Uh, I think there was a Star Trek one in development at some point. Like everything, all every company just looked at its properties and was like, let's make an MMO. The same way that, like, right now every company wants to make a cinematic universe because they've seen the success of Marvel. It's like, once something's successful, every other company tries to copy it. Anyway, let's uh, speak to this guy. 
Uh, he says, the kobolds will be charging down this passage here. I'll only have uh, time to fire a few arrows before they close for melee. Venture into the tunnels beyond. Bring me more arrows. It might just save my life. Um, or... Uh, the kobolds are raising gloomfang spiders. The queen of gloomfang's latest brood recently tore from their cocoons. Uh, let's go kill some spiders. Clearing the vermin nests. Speak with... Valaria. Oh, I wasn't I supposed to speak with him? Wait, where's... Where's Valara again? Control F. The armor missions. There she is. Oh, I guess we're gonna get armor for having killed all that vermin. Hello! So we can get... Greaves. Oh, and look at all the stats they give us. I'll just take them. Why not? What does Reclaim do? Not even sure. Hey, look! Jaybreaker. He's a level 3 warrior. Agnostic. Not too sure about the afterlife or a divine creator. But uh, he has 222 hit points, 0 mana, 75 endurance, 17 out of 30 armor class, uh, attack of 48 divided by 61. Whatever that means. That's, that's, you know, if you had to, if you had, if you had to run some numbers on Jaybreaker, that's what he would be. Kill 12 gloom spiders. Kill four Gloomfang Lurkers. Alright. I like how the, uh... <laughs> the cave rats and stuff are just totally ignoring me now. They're like, ah, uh, we better not mess with that guy. He kind of slaughtered us all. Alright, let's go into spider territory and see about killing some of these dirty spiders. Alright, here's one right now. Let's do it! Spiderling! Alright, and... <laughs> and off we go. So I guess this game does have a fair amount of grinding, it seems. At least these tutorial levels are basically nothing more than like, go kill six of these enemies and carry on, you know? I think here's another one. Oh, there's that team of people who are like killing spiders. I wonder what they think of me. They're like, hey, there's, just, there's a guy soloing EverQuest. Unheard of. He doesn't understand what the M in MMORPG stands for. Alright, another dead spider. Carry on. Maybe I should be turning in all those rat pelts that I got. Maybe that's a thing we should do. Ah, die, spider! Um, here's another fun fact about this game while we're waiting between spider deaths. Um, in 2008, this game was actually banned in Brazilian territory. So I don't know if that's since been rectified or changed, but uh, yeah, the uh, EverQuest, I guess if you live in Brazil, you couldn't get a hold of it and you still might not be able to. And it was banned by a federal court because they found that the game leads the players to a loss of moral virtue and takes them into heavy psychological conflicts because of the game's quests. And, <laughs> I mean, of all the games to ban, um, I almost feel like, uh, shouldn't you be banning, like, Fallout? You know, if, you're, if you want to talk about morally ambiguous decisions, uh, shouldn't you be talking about either Fallout or, like, how about Grand Theft Auto, talking about lack of virtues and morals? Um, you know, I mean, I, I enjoy Grand Theft Auto, but, I mean, if you want to pick on a game that might, you know, steer people into questionable moral territory, like, maybe. Uh, I personally don't think video games lead people to violence, just for the record, but, you know, um, it's you... Mortal Kombat and Grand Theft Auto are kind of like the punching bags for, um, you know, the moral panic people. So, I, I don't know, like, picking on, uh... Picking on EverQuest here doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Also, in 2008, the game was eight years old at that point. Like, talk about missing the boat. Uh, shouldn't you have done that like eight years prior? I don't know. It just seems weird. So, yeah, apparently this game is so like, what? Look at this. Look at what we're doing, guys. We're killing spiders, man. I feel my my moral virtues slipping away right now. I don't know how much longer we should keep playing this game. I I just feel like I'm becoming a very bad person, and uh, it's making me making me want to do things that most of society would consider questionable. So, uh, but you know. Uh, in Brazil, you don't have to worry about that. They got you covered. The government 
don't worry, this game has been banned by the Brazilian government. They got they got their citizens covered. They know what's going on. Um what is that? Okay, so we, we want to find this uh this queen. Um Gloomfang Lurker. I imagine those are like bigger, badder, more deadly spiders. We'll try killing a spider's nest and see if it unlocks a lurker or something like that. The gloom spider. This guy's like really taking a beating, actually. I like how they put like dramatic conflict music, but I'm literally just sitting here just waiting for numbers to go down. Like, come on, man, hit this stupid spider. <laughs> Thrilling action RPG. There we go. Loot. Let's attack this thing, too. Go. Um, auto attack is on. All right, we're killing us. We killed a spider cocoon. Are you sure you want to keep? Uh, cocoon silk is no trade. Oh yeah. I don't care about the other people on this server. They are not gonna get my loot, man. Alright, let's- we've killed- we, we still have to kill five more spiders, but let's try and find a, a queen. What up, peeps? Bobo Go Bob Goaty, Bab Gipati, Rebgo, Ragpo. Hey, can we say thanks? Thanks, bro. <laughs> oh, I tried to do a smiley face, and it didn't come out. All right. Um, anything cool down here? No. So where do you find these? Uh, this queen. Kill the lurkers in the mines of Gloom Deep. Maybe they only like appear after you've killed enough spiders. Oh wait, we can use the map. Okay, we are in here. So we need to go down this way. Why is my map like selecting something over here? I I definitely don't want that to be selected. It's actually kind of annoying. Um, the Gloomfang mines. Oh, spiders are attacking me. Hold on. Time out. Let's auto attack these guys. Yeah, spiders, you want some? Alright, while well, we're killing these spiders, I guess I can just start working on my map stuff here. Go ahead and take that. Hey, okay, my auto attack went off. Attack! Attack? There we go. Um. Clear? Okay, hold on. We want to find. Lurker. Match labels. Okay. So that, we're in the lair. Gloomfang lair. I almost think like down there somewhere. Where we want to go. Gloomfang lair. Okay. Am I just getting killed? What's happening? My guy's still fighting. Hey! Who told you to stop fighting, dude? Attack this thing. We're at 8 of 12 spiders. Crushed. 15. 6. There we go, alright. Now... I just want to find a lurker. Where would these things be? Kinda seems like they don't exist. Like am I am I crazy? There's spiderlings. A groom a gloom oh I thought it was a groom spider. What is this thing? Pile of bones. Attack that. Do we got? Anything in these bones here? Seems like maybe not. Alright, I have an idea. This is the EverQuest button. 
And in here, you can learn about stuff. I wonder if they have enemies. Hotkeys, navigation, players, quests. Okay, maybe it's under quest. Adventures, expeditions. Uh, you're not currently assigned to an adventure. Okay. I thought this was like the encyclopedia of stuff. I think it is, but I don't think anyone's so basic that they can't find uh, gloom spiders. Okay, the pile of bones is a bust. Um, oh, what are these things? I was, I'm strengthened. I have a haze. Man, they gave me buffs. That was so nice of them. Okay, I just looked it up. It says the Gloomfang Lurkers are the super-powered versions of the spiders. You can find them in the back of the spider den um, where the queen can be found. I have not seen a queen. But, presumably, if we want to go to the back of the spider den, it would just be over this way, right? Like, in theory, this is as back as it gets. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, hello. Oh. Oh, we found him. <laughs> All right, well, I was about to say, like, let's give up and move to uh, another quest, but, uh, you know, we're making progress. Apparently, there was a, a ramp upward that I didn't even notice before. But let's see if we can kill these things. This one is actually proving formidable. It's, uh... It's got more health than me at this point, actually. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to kill this thing. What happens when you die? Do you just die? If I camp, I will exit. I can sit and walk. Come on, Jay Break, you can do it! Break this spider upon your... fists. Or upon your sword. All right, we got it. 22% health. Come on, hit him. Hit him. Hit him! Stop getting hit and hit him! Oh, I wish I was in control of the sword. <laughs> okay, 8%, we got it. Oh my god, I almost died. Okay, that was one of four, and I'm at 14% health. Um... Strengthen... Haze. Well, let's, uh... Can I... Can I run? Uh, walk. My guy's moving a little more slowly, I think, because he's injured. I think I've been, uh, sapped by the spider. Let's see if anybody heals. Let's see, achievements. Uh, corpse summons. I guess that's when you die, you come back. Uh, merchant. Let's go to the merchant, because I feel like, uh... I wouldn't mind... Um, seeing if we could, uh, oh, thanks. I I'm going to say, uh, let's see, tell, hold on, how do we, how do we do this? Oh God, get out of the text. No, get out of the text. You no longer have a target. Thanks! Alright, let's slaughter the spider. Um, and where did my quests go? I think I closed them. There they are. I like to keep all my windows open. I'm like, uh, an old lady checking her email. I don't want to lose anything. I just keep every single tab open in Chrome that I've ever opened. Um, but okay, I was going to go back to town... ...and look at maybe buying some better armor and stuff. I think I still will, even though they were kind enough to just heal me up. Um, that was pretty sweet, actually. I see the value of other humans. I still am not going to team up with them, but I see their value. Anyway, let's now follow the path. And the path goes this way. Okay, how do I get out of here? It wants me to go up and over this rock. Oh, you can just... Wait, I just jumped... I just fully jumped up a rock. Huh. Alright, there's way more verticality than I realized. In this game, actually, it turns out. Uh, Alright, we're gonna run up to town here, and we're heading to the merchant. 
Uh, we'll also see if we can find somewhere to heal, and then we'll come back in, try and slaughter a couple more of these Gloomfang spiders. See about completing yet another mission here. And then I think we'll see if there's some way we can, like, get into a fight with Kobolds, because I'm tired of killing vermin. I want to kill, like, real things. Wyden is a merchant. He can buy items you bring or sell him. Uh, Right-click on him to bring up the merchant window. All right, dude. Let's see. Um, I want... I want armor. Or do I? Uh, first of all, can I sell him stuff? What do I have? Guild summons? What are these? These are worth nothing. Nothing. Uh, okay, hold on a second here. Can these things be equipped? No. Uh, except, what is this? Is this like rat meat? Rat ears? Uh -uh. Okay, and these are rat paws. Bone chips. I'm gonna sell all this stuff. Raw stiff hide. Okay, dude. I'm just gonna sell you everything I got. And let's, uh... Let's see what... See what we get. Selling some furs. Some spiderling legs. Some hide. You want some bat wings? I'll throw in some rat paws. Throw in some of the rat ears, too. Bone chips. All right, how much money do I actually have? Oh my god, I have like nothing. I have two gold. Wait, can I afford anything? Um, everything seems expensive. How much is like... How much is this? 53 pence. Seven gold! Damn it. Can I buy anything? I can't buy anything. I have no money. <laughs> okay. Well, it turns out my character is dirt poor. Uh, so the other thing we can look for in town is somebody who heals. Um, and... Hey, we're level four. It's not too bad. Uh, spell, swimming, weapons. Maybe weapons are cheaper than armor. What up, dude? Sell me some weapons. Hail. Alright. Sell me some weapons. Hello. Uh, wait, what does he say? He's a weapon maker. You should already have a weapon equipped, but he can make it better. Open your inventory and remove the weapon from the lower left slot. This is the primary weapon slot. Okay. I give it to him. Make my weapon better. I have no need for this. You can take it back. Crap. All right. I was hoping he would be able to sell me better weapons. Um, all right. Anyone, does anyone heal? Raid skills, swimming spells. Nope, 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 nope. All right. Well, time has healed all wounds. We are fully regenerated now, so... Let's head back into the, the mines and see if we can slaughter another spider or two. I have another idea. I think maybe that big group of players might be moving into the mines, and maybe I'll just sort of, like, hang around them. And uh, as soon as they start uh, attacking one of the lurkers, I'll kind of join in, and uh, maybe I'll also get the experience. Hopefully, I don't steal their kills. Can you imagine? That would be that would be sad. I I, I don't want to screw over other players who are actually trying to play this game here today. Because uh, again, we're just exploring it. Spider Tamer Gugan. Who is this guy? Hello. Hey, old Spider Tamer. Oh god, he's attacking me. He's not a good guy. This is a bad guy. This is a very, very bad guy. I thought you were like a nice NPC, man. Didn't realize that we were on bad terms here. Spider Tamer Gugan. Oh my god, and he's summoning spiders to help him fight. <laughs> no! Back off, dude! Oh my god, my, you know what, my, uh, my time in the mine tier is not going well. Alright, time to flee from the spider tamer guy, because he's clearly outclassing me. These people are just, these people are going through very slowly, it seems. They're just taking their time running through the mines here. Um, I'm going to continue carrying upward here. Oh my god, there's the queen! Can I just straight up open this? 
Oh my god, oh my god, I'm di- <laughs> There's no way this is happening. You're supposed to do this in a group, I'm pretty sure. Uh, hey, you guys want to come help me fight the Spider Queen? <laughs> Cause I'm about to die. <laughs> okay. Well, now I can, uh, respawn. You've been slain by the Spider Queen. It's okay, I just, uh, regenerated. Death means nothing in video games. Although, I, I know in this game, I think if you die, you, like, lose levels or something. Or you used to at one point. I'm not sure if that's still the case. Um, again, friends from high school, like, 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> it would tell me how this game worked. Um, okay, I say... We've, we've kind of messed around this game for a bit. Gone through some of the tutorials. I get the basic idea, but we're still kind of limited to these basic missions. Why don't we see... If we can find a mission where we fight kobolds, and we're gonna die horribly, but let's just go out, uh, let's just go out, uh, having some fun here, and, uh, killing some kobolds here. Um, cause I have a feeling that, uh, most of the missions are just, like, go to a place, fight some monsters. Um, uh, I mean, certainly missions will get more advanced in a game like this, like, you'll have fetch quests, and maybe, like, patrols, and, uh, you know... You have to go into a dungeon, and raids are a big thing. I know about how important raids are in EverQuest. You know, typical MMO things, but, you know, I don't think we're going to get nearly that far today, because uh, we've been playing this already for almost an hour. But here we go, the Battle of Gloomdeep. Can you hear the sound of combat? Let's just accept this mission. Kill five Gloomingdale grunts. Kill ten warriors. All right, let's go, man. I'm done killing vermin. I got killed by a spider queen, but I don't care. I'm just going in to kill the big boys now. Yeah, this looks more like a dungeon. This is what I signed up for today. All right, we're going to fight a grunt. You're going down, grunty. We're going to bash him too. Yeah, there you go. I guess I should have been using these abilities on, um, you know, on the, the spiders. But, uh, I don't know why I didn't. Alright. I think we'll be able to kill this guy. Bash him! Boom! What does bash actually do? I don't know, but it takes four seconds to regenerate. Bash him! Come on, man! Slaughter this guy! Slaughter him! 23%? 14%? This guy, like, almost killed me, too. So, I mean, obviously you're supposed to be playing this with a little bit of a gang. Even just, like, two or three people. Like, you could have a healer, you could have a tank, you could have a ranged guy. Like, the game probably opens up a lot more. Um, I think one other thing about MMOs is that, like, you, you almost have to play them more in a team. Um, like, again, like, I was saying earlier in this video that, you know, like, it's, when you think about a game like this isn't that different from, like, um, you know, Diablo, but Diablo you definitely can play solo, like, it is, you can play multiplayer too, and it's quite fun to play with friends, but you also can definitely just play it solo and, and mess around, um, but it seems like EverQuest is balanced more towards almost having to play with friends? Um, but I want to put a big asterisk besides that because, again, I can only look at this from the perspective of someone who doesn't know what they're doing. It's totally possible that someone who knows all the classes, understands the abilities and the enemies, can go through these tutorial levels by themselves, not needing any help. Like, I don't even 100% know how to heal. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, my guy's a warrior, so he doesn't really have any abilities, per se, that I know about. For healing. In fact, I think I'm about to die. Oh my god, am I gonna kill two of these guys? Yes! Okay. I don't know how to heal. Hey, what's down here, actually? Oh god! Wait, did I just die? Did I die? You've been knocked unconscious. Oh, and then I continued to fall, and then I've been knocked unconscious again. Oh god. You're bleeding to death. I think I'm- I think I'm done, guys. Oh. <laughs> he fa I- I just- it, it's like the Simpsons episode of Homer Jump in the Gorge. I, like, bounced my way down a cliff until I died. Um, alright. 
Well, I think we can see that in order to keep going, I'm, I'm going to have to grind quite a bit more. And uh, the monsters are just a little too tough for me here. So, uh, you know, we've kind of reached our limit in these opening levels here. So here's a question. How much can a total newbie learn about EverQuest in about an hour? And I would say quite a bit, actually. I mean, I feel like we got the basic controls down. We got the basic idea of questing. The inventory and mat and you know windows and all this stuff it looks super intimidating, but I will be honest. Like once you kind of get the hang of it, like I mean it comes very quick, and you get you know the basics are not really that hard to figure out. So if you were to sit down and actually try and play through this, like you can figure out the basics in an afternoon and probably get pretty comfortable with the game. So yeah, I think uh, in terms of playability, this game still has a lot. A lot of that um, it seems to be balanced a little bit towards groups or I mean I might recommend having some kind of spellcaster character who can heal that seems to be an ability my guys missing I don't know if I overlooked it um, or if it does exist for barbarians or if I just need a buddy who selects like a healer class or something like that so there obviously are still some questions that I have um, and uh, you know, probably answer to that would come from further play, further play testing, messing around with different character classes, seeing how they compare and so on. So in about an hour, I feel like I got a general impression of the game. Obviously, there are many details that I'm unsure about. Um, but in terms of getting a sense of how this game plays, you know, we at least know how it begins. Um, there are more advanced things you can do here, like rating and all that that we haven't really looked at. Um, but nonetheless, it is cool to go back and look at a game like this. This is really one of the granddaddies of all MMORPGs, uh, including World of Warcraft, which is often itself considered, you know, like the big MMORPG of ever. <laughs> but between this and Ultima Online, you know, the, those two games basically gave, these two games, this and Ultima Online, gave birth to the MMO genre. So, um, if you have never checked out this game, but you do, you were a fan of MUDs back in the day, or Dungeons and Dragons, or something like that, the fact that this is free to play, I feel like this would be a good one to get into. Um, if you like those sort of, uh, you know, original D&D kind of experiences, you get to actually explore worlds in 3D, and it's pretty impressive that this game has lasted as long as it has. I hope it becomes like MUDs, and just lasts almost forever. And, uh, you know, in our grandchildren's day, when everyone is beaming games right into the back of their skull, Matrix style, we can say, hey, did you know that there's a polygonal uh, MMORPG that is still playable to this day? And people will be amazed, much in the same way that if you tell them if a MUD, uh, about a MUD, a multi-user dungeon text game is still playable, people are like, wow, that's crazy. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. Those are my thoughts on Neverquest. What do you guys think? Is it a game that you must play before you die? Is it a game that you played back in the day? Did you play it in high school? Were you like my friends who stopped coming to class, who got terrible grades because I played EverQuest? Did you raid? Did you do all that stuff? Share your memories uh, in the comments down below. Tell us a bit more about the game if you know more than me. Uh, again, my experience here was that of a total newbie and trying to see how much we could learn in about an hour. But feel free to let us know about everything EverQuest has to offer that we weren't able to see here today. And uh, whatever you think of the game, whatever you think of my opinion of the game, hopefully today was interesting and you had a bit of fun. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff, and I will catch you in the next video. So until next time, my friends, you take care of yourself. And from Jaybreaker, peace.